Thank you for introduction. Energy harvesting technologies have attracted significant attention due to the possibility of conducting semi-permanent operations for wireless sensor networks. In particular, energy harvesting is an ideal solution for driving agriculture modern sensors that must be installed in large areas where power supply is not available. Solar energy is typically used outdoors. However, in agriculture monitoring, solar panels are not suitable for some applications because they can get hidden with the growth of plants and need to compete with the vegetation to acquire sunlight, which is valuable for crops. Recently, a novel harvesting approach was suggested, which uses the temperature difference between near surface air and shallow underground soil at the depth of 30 cm. This is an example of temperature data from an actual feed. The blue line shows the temperature of near surface air, which has large daily fluctuations. The orange line shows the temperature of underground 30 cm soil which is almost constant. There exists a temperature difference between them, hinin after referred to as TDASU. By using this temperature difference and thermal electric generator, the thermal electric generator is a solid state device that can directly convert the temperature difference on both sides of the TEG into electricity. It was proven that the harvester can generate hundreds of microwatts on average from the temperature difference of the field. The primitives of the harvester using the temperature difference have been studied in previous work, but the energy management method was not being explored. The power output exhibits significant fluctuation due to daily temperature changes and dynamic weather patterns. So the energy management method that allows the sensor nodes to maintain their power supply at appropriate level is a necessity. In general, energy management methods consist of three steps. The first step, the instantiation of an energy generation model to predict future energy availability from a past energy profile. The second step computes optimal duty cycles based on the predicted future energy profile. And the third step is dynamically adapting the duty cycles in real time in response to the observed energy profile. In this paper, we focused on the first step, the prediction method. One of the famous prediction methods is exponentially weighted moving average, EWMA method. In the EWMA method, the daily energy profile is divided into n slots. Predicted energy vector and observed energy vector are expressed in this way. Oh, just a moment. And this is how to update the predicted energy vector. The energy sources on the D plus one is accepted, expected to be similar to the energy source at the same time on day D. In addition, it is also expected to be influenced by seasonal variations. Predicted energy vector is updated according to these equations. Alpha is a weighting factor and commonly set to 0 0.5. Many researchers have investigated energy prediction mo model such as for solar like EWMA. However, energy harvesting technology using the temperature difference differs from other energy sources in a number of ways. So we designed the energy prediction model, TCMA method, considering the characteristics of the temperature difference between air and underground soil. Here is a comparison of energy profiles. The left side is an example of the temperature difference the right side is that of solar energy. Unlike sunlight that only reaches the earth during the day, 
the temperature difference occurs throughout the day. Moreover, the direction of the temperature gradient between air and soil changes. The temperature is lower in the soil than the air during the day, and the temperature is higher in the soil than the air during the night. So the output power approach zero every half day. In other words, the temperature difference has a both a one day and a half day periodicity. About solar energy, there is one peak during the daytime and the energy values remain at zero at all other times. So the prediction of the next cycle, the D plus one, cannot be guided by the energy profile at the end of the current cycle, the D, night of the D. About the temperature difference, there are two peaks. These are caused by the change in the direction of the temperature gradient between air and soil. So the energy profile of the second peak of the current cycle can be used as a clue to predict the next cycle, the D plus one. By comparing the shape of the second peak on the D and that on the D minus one, it can be determined whether the temperature difference on the D plus one tends to be larger or smaller. For example, whether sunny or cloudy days alternate. So we introduced a new parameter to reflect this comparison result. And we rewrote EWMA method with the new parameter. The new parameter row consists of two more parameters, beta and gamma. I will explain this parameter in order. In addition, the temperature difference occurs throughout the day and the observed value of the current day has a very strong correlation with that of the previous day. So we use 0 0.8 as a weighted factor alpha. The new parameter beta explains gradient of energy profile in the last two hours of second peak. In other words, decrease rate of temperature difference between air and soil. As I mentioned before, the soil temperature is almost constant. So if the parameter beta is large, the temperature of the air, the temperature change of the air is likely to change dynamically, and the energy profile of the next cycle is expected to be large. In addition to temperature gradient, some of the temperature difference between air and soil is also expected to affect that value for the next cycle. So we define the parameter gamma. As described, we rewrote the equation of the EWMA method with new parameters. To suppress outliers, we define the maximum and minimum of parameter beta and gamma. This is to avoid overestimation that causes power supply shortages. We evaluated the performance of our prediction algorithm using the two weeks of temperature difference data collected from fees in Japan and India. For the variation, we compare the predicted energy with the actual energy from each time slot. The prediction error for one cycle one day was calculated with the mean absolute percentage error MAPE function. This table shows the average MAPE value for the conventional EWMA method and our TCMA. This also shows the reduction rate in prediction error for the TCMA compared to the EWMA. I will explain in order. In field one, the dairy energy profile is not constant, for example, due to weather changes. In such an environment, TCMA is better suited for energy production than the conventional EWMA. 
TCMA method reduces error by about 25% compared to the previous method. The result of field 2 shows the same trend as the field 1. On the other hand, in field 3, which is in a tropical dry climate, the weather is almost the same every day, and the temperature profile doesn't change much. So the future profile of the temperature difference is not difficult to predict. MAP values of both EWMA and TCMA in feed 3 are much smaller than those in feed 1 and 2. So both algorithms are sufficient for prediction. In this paper, we have presented the energy prediction model for energy harvesting technology that uses the temperature difference between air and the soil. Our evaluation showed that TCMA performs better than the conventional solution, with reduction in prediction error by up to 25%. Thank you for listening.